Hello, this is Scarlet and Rage Podcast, and we are coming to you again with a uh, end of the week podcast. So this is the second time we have done a second episode throughout the week. Uh, the uh, last couple episodes have been getting some fantastic views. So we thank you guys for watching, for your interest. We thank all of you that have subscribed. And I hope that if you haven't, you will uh, go ahead and do that now. Go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button if you would like the video as well. Or if you don't like it, you can downvote it, you know, but just interact with us in some way. Uh, and remember to hit that bell because when you hit that bell, you'll know every time we go live. Right now, we're, uh, we're, we're releasing an episode every Monday and then sometimes later on in the week as well. All right, we're going to discuss uh, quite a few things today. We're going to talk about the program, the state of the program. Does Ryan Day have control of the program or is he maybe losing control of the program? But before we get into any of that, we're going to, um, you know, we got some news today, Jay, uh, out of the Michigan camp. And that is that uh, Jim Harbaugh is supposedly very close to signing a five-year $55 million deal. There's a few stipulations in that that he would have to concede uh, before he signed it. I think uh, from my understanding, he'd have to provide uh, the university in writing, uh, you know, some type of promise. I don't know the details of it, that he's not going to be pursuing an NFL job, um, which obviously has impacted their recruiting in the last couple of last couple of cycles. So I don't know if anything's going to end up coming of this uh, cheating scandal or not. I was skeptical of it from the beginning. I was banned from an Ohio State message board for being skeptical of it. I, I you know, I'm back on it now. I've been reinstated, but I was banned for saying we need to shut up about the scandal. We need to, uh, you know, beat them, which of course we didn't. And that's all that really matters. It doesn't matter what happened the last two years. It doesn't matter what the NCAA does. I was always skeptical that a whole lot was going to happen. Maybe something will happen. Maybe it won't. I don't know. It's looking kind of more and more like maybe they're not going to get that big of a punishment. But, you know, uh, Ohio State uh, Buckeye Nation has kind of gone crazy with this whole thing. Um, uh, to me, it it's... Um, it's just a symptom of not accepting the fact that Ryan Day's program has some serious flaws and that Michigan has uh, been the one team in the Big Ten that's been able to exploit those flaws. And so if you kind of begin to push back on, on some of these theories and, and some of these things, uh, they tend to get very angry with you. And moderators, as I found out, will even ban you. Uh, so I think somebody got pretty fired up at you today, didn't they? Man, dude. Everyone, let me just say, I know my name is Rage today, but honestly, I've this has been one of the best days of my life. And just, you know, I'm not going to get too personal with it, but there's been a lot of good in my life lately. And it's it's great. You know, I'm smelling the flowers and stuff. You know, everything with Ohio State's not very good, but I'm not going to let that drag me down today. Anywho, I was just perusing around the message boards today. Not going to say which one. Yeah, you know, news came about, and we'll talk about this later, that no, Jim Knowles is coming back. And I was like, well, you know, that kind of sucks. He's not very good. You know, we've discussed on here, everyone knows Knowles isn't very good. And some guy just kind of attacks me with a personal attack, just says, oh, yeah, you know, I bet you were never accused of being smart or anything. And I'm like, dude, why don't you tell me that I'm wrong or something? Why are you coming at me with some kind of personal attack? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and, you know, they're trying to say it's not a personal attack, but regardless, he's insulting my intelligence so rather than trying to explain to me why I was wrong. And then what you're talking about, about the, the Jim Harbaugh thing. So I was on Facebook, and I think it was on 11 Warriors. And on 11 Warriors, they had, like, the possible five-year extension. And all I said was, I've made the comment. I was like, eh, good for them. He's the best coach in the Big Ten. And boy, oh, boy, did that create a fucking firestorm. Like, damn. People are like yeah. personal attacking me, attacking the way I look, attacking my Facebook, attacking my family. Just all of these nasty, nasty, despicable comments. Come on, people. I know we're a rageful podcast here, but I hope you're not acting like this to your fellow person out in the world. Please tell me you're not in the comments. Please tell me like if you are or aren't. I hope you aren't. But, you know, we have a really 
we're we're very very rageful about Ohio State, but we have a very laid back lifestyle, Michael, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, we're now, very I, I laid wonder, back. I wonder if other fan bases um, are so nasty to each other uh, because, like, if you go against the board uh, on the Buckeye boards, mm -hmm. like you, you will, um, you know, you will get insulted. Like, and you know, and I'm used to it at this point. But I mean, you will get insult insulted up one side and down the other. Now, uh, since uh, I have been right about a couple of things, mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting insulted less. And so while it stinks that I was right, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, kind of nice, you know, that, uh, uh, the, the things that I was seeing and the dots that I was connecting were accurate. And so, you know, we're going to try and connect some more of those dots tonight about the program in general and whether or not it is heading in the right direction or whether or not attrition is starting to set in and maybe michael let me interrupt don't ex don't mistake my kindness for weakness yeah i'm a rageful person on here but i'm actually a cool guy but don't fuck with me in the real world now i'm not going to put up with that stuff don't worry that guy on facebook i definitely called him out and he was a coward he's never going to actually say it to my face i told him where i was and he never really got back to me i'm like oh okay so you're a coward then you can't actually say the things you're saying outside of like in your little virtual reality behind your keyboard he he couldn't do anything man and i knew that but yeah i just I, would never think to like insult somebody's personal character by right. an opinion they have about on like some kind of internet blog i hope you guys don't feel that way about me and all my hot takes on here or michael's right there, there's one guy in particular that's you know and we'll get we'll move on here in a second but there's one guy in particular on uh, one of the boards that i'm on and he's truly not very smart. Like you can tell he's a low IQ guy and, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say that, you know, I mean, I'm not going to like yeah. attack the poor guy's intelligence, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell him that his takes stink and I'm going to tell him why I think they stink, but I'm not going to be like, you're clearly have a very low IQ, you know, <laughs> or you're clearly not very yeah, smart. Man. People uh, but, take it too, uh, like they take it. Like you're almost like having, I don't know. Like you're, you're, I swear you make a comment about Jim Harbaugh and it's like, you freaking beat their child. Like, Whoa, Hey, what's going on here? Why, why are you yeah. coming at me like that? Yeah. 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 I don't it, know, man. It, People it, are well, just, you know, I don't and, know. And it's, uh, it's just kind of where we are in the fan base right now. It's a very frustrated fan base. It's a mm -hmm. very, there's a lot of angst in the fan base. And, um, if you look back at, you know, the record, uh, of Ryan day, you 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 know you could kind of on the surface draw the argument oh well that would be crazy to have angst but it's not crazy at all there's nothing crazy about having concern and um earlier this week there was another i'll say uh i won't i won't even say like controversial but unprecedented type of event that happened at ohio state uh and particularly for ryan day because mm -hmm. He has been dubbed as the coach with the golden touch with quarterbacks. Of course, uh, he inherited Dwayne Haskins. That was uh, Urban's guy. Um, uh, he also inherited Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow, of course, did not ever play for him. Um, and then uh, Justin Fields, he gets to the portal. And then C.J. Stroud, he recruits. And before you know it, you've got this string of three straight first-round quarterbacks. And Day has this uh, reputation. Well, that reputation um, – it was sterling up until this year with Kyle McCord. And it took even a little bit more of a hit this week, at least temporarily time will tell mm -hmm. how it shakes out, but we have never had a starting quarterback for Ohio state. Just leave and say, I don't want to be a part of this program anymore. Uh, and that happened this week, you know, kind of shocking news, Kyle McCord, is transferring. We don't know where he's going yet. Uh, it, you know, it, maybe Nebraska, maybe Rutgers. There's maybe a couple of other options that have not really been leaked yet, but we, we don't know where he's going, but we know he is not staying at Ohio state. And so regardless of what happens, this certainly does kind of put uh, a little bit of it takes a little bit of the shine off of Ryan Day's quarterback prowess because Kyle McCord was not a NFL level quarterback 
And now he's leaving. And what happens next is going to be very important because, you know, once you have, you begin to feel invincible when you don't have a miss. But then once you have a miss, the pressure's really on for the next guy. Like if you miss on the next guy, then it goes from, oh, well, it was a one-off miss to, uh-oh, now we might have a problem. And without getting into a lot of detail, uh, Ryan Day's had a lot of misses at quarterbacks, which it's been okay because he's always gotten at least the one guy that, that has done well. But, I mean, if you go back through, you know, Jack Miller and, and, and a lot of guys that, uh, you know, several of his guys that he's brought in have, have not ended up being successful, and um, it hasn't mattered. But now he's at a point that he has to have one of these guys step up because the guy that he chose, for whatever reason, is gone. And so, Jay, what do you think that means? Uh, how do you interpret this event of losing the starting quarterback, of the starting quarterback just saying, I I'm out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hang around here any longer. You know, um, this is kind of a two-part answer, Michael, in my opinion. Um, it started out with, I actually kind of felt bad for Kyle McCord because I think he was unfairly blamed. We talked about this on this podcast before. He was blamed for the loss to Michigan, and was he a part of the loss? Absolutely he was. But, again, we've said it on here. Um, I've said it. I, I do not place the sole blame on Kyle McCord. I place the blame on Ryan Day and I in second would probably be Jim Knowles and that disgusting defensive game plan they had against Michigan. People mm -hmm. keep ignoring that and just just brushing under the table. The offensive play calling um you know, where were the deep action, you know, play action throws against Michigan and stuff? You know, he didn't really have any of them. Even if the guy wasn't open, you still should throw it just to spread the defense out. They didn't run Travion very well. They didn't try and get him outside in that game. But um, apparently the McCord family was looking for some assur – again, this is all anecdotal evidence. I have no idea. But from reading between the lines, the McCord family and his dad, Derek McCord, I believe is his name – um, went to Ryan Day and wanted to really understand that, hey, is my son going to still start here next year? And Ryan Day couldn't give him an answer. So they just packed up shop and left. And, you know, as more I think about it, I do think Kyle McCord and his family are really, really soft personality wise. But at the same time, they, you know, he wants to make sure he's playing and, you know, in a system where he can demonstrate his talents to probably make the NFL. I don't know. It's, it's probably all of the above, you know, maybe they're, you know, they're saying that Ryan day really drilled into Kyle McCord on the sidelines and mm -hmm. was really upset with him during like certain games and stuff. But I mean, I think Ryan day, like we said it before, needs to be taking a look in the mirror about a lot of things there. So that's my opinion on the matter. It, it is weird to lose a starting quarterback. I don't know if anyone has ever had like a starter through the entire year. I know they're they, like NC state, for instance, had their guy basically like starting half of the year, like MJ Morris came in to replace Brennan Armstrong. And then he decides, Oh, you know what? I'm going to sit out the rest of the year because I want to preserve my red shirt so I can go to another team and get NIL money. Did you know that? Yeah, uh, no, I didn't. Um, Pretty disgusting but, situation. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, you know, back in the old days, some of the lesser programs would have the guys that um, maybe they redshirted a year, or maybe they were just very, uh, you know, very diligent in the classroom, mm -hmm. and they graduated while still having a year of eligibility, and they would they would go from a lesser program and go play their last right. year at, at another program. So you used to see that. Um, but you know, we're in a different world now with the transfer portal where you can kind of come and go mm -hmm. as you please. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know of any major top 10 type program that's ever had a quarterback start from, from start to finish that, you know, just ends up, uh, leaving. And so it, it is an odd situation, but I actually, um, this is one of the, the few things in the last couple of years that I actually give Ryan Day credit for um, because I don't know if it's going to work out for him. It might work out terribly for him, but I at least give him credit for taking his shot. I give him credit for taking his swing um, because I think we knew what we had with Kyle McCord. 
Um, and, and some people would say, well, I just really feel like if he would have had another year, it would have been drastically different. <sighs> we just didn't see a lot of improvement from game one to game 12. So I don't know that it would have been drastically different. I think maybe he just kind of is who he is. Uh, he missed some really um, standard throws in the Michigan game that could have been impactful. So, you know, I, I remember specifically an out route to Marvin. He's wide open, doesn't hit him. Uh, remember a little swing out to Trey. He's wide open. He throws it into the ground. Um, you know, so he missed some very easy throws. And I, I think we just kind of knew what we had with him. He played very tight. I might blame some of that on Ryan Day. I think he probably coached him tight. Um, and we, you know, we're starting to see that, that, uh, Ryan day has, uh, he has this impact on his quarterbacks where he kind of wants to restrict them and control them. And I think he's going to have to get over that if he's ever going to get over the hump, you know, CJ Stroud said, uh, you know, at the NFL combine that he was coached not to run. Um, Justin Fields, reported by Dave Biddle from Bucknuts, said uh, flat out, uh, yeah, Coach Day told me not to run, but you know, at times I just didn't listen to him. Um, and I think it's pretty obvious when he rushed for like 480 yards uh, in college and then rushes for over 1,000 yards in the NFL that Ryan Day kind of had the, the reins on him and was definitely coaching him not to run. So I don't know what his obsession is with uh, coaching quarterbacks not to, not to run. But it's kind of come full circle, Jay. You know, we complained about Urban and the running quarterbacks, and we wanted these quarterbacks that could pass, pass, pass. And we've gotten these quarterbacks that can pass, pass, pass. And it hasn't uh, worked out the way that we thought it would because the truth of the matter is, is no matter how good you can pass, you still got to be able to take off and get the easy yards that are available throughout the game and, and our quarterbacks have not been doing that. And I can only conclude after watching C.J. Stroud in the NFL that they're not doing it because of Ryan Day. So I don't know why, uh, you know, he's, he's going to have to figure, he's going to have to take a look at the mirror and figure that out. Now, second thing I would throw out there to you, um, Ryan Day's the head coach. He's not the quarterback coach. I know that, you know, being a quarterback – He's a former quarterback. You know, that's his deal. You know, he, he's very involved with the, uh, with the quarterbacks. But Corey Dennis is the quarterback coach. So Ryan Day's got a lot on his plate. He can't just coach all the quarterbacks. I'm sure he spends a lot of time with the starter. But the guys that are in the wings, that's got to fall primarily on Corey Dennis. And so the question is, now that we've finally seen a chink in the quarterback development, um, because Dwayne Haskins was not developed by Corey Dennis or really even that much by Ryan Day. Uh, Justin Fields started off his career at Georgia and just came in. And, and you know, he, he didn't spend any time with Corey Dennis and the wings. C.J. Stroud uh, is uh, literally the, you know, one of the top seven quarterbacks on the planet, we found out. So, you know, he, he's a, a, a different level talent. Um, and now we get Kyle McCord, somebody who's had two years with Corey Dennis and it, you know, it didn't look all that good. So I'm not ne definitely saying that Corey Dennis is the problem, but I'm certainly saying he doesn't have any clout. I mean, he was urban son-in-law and I don't think he really did anything to get the job other than be urban son-in-law. So I think Ryan Day needs to see what he can do to arrange for Corey Dennis to spread his wings and fly uh, and go somewhere else and, and, and get out from underneath the shadow of Ryan Day, make a name for himself, and bring in a proven quarterback coach to develop uh, and, and help with these guys that are in the wings so that they are maybe potentially a little bit more ready when their time comes. No, I couldn't agree more, man. Corey Dennis, I'm looking at his bio here, and he's only ever worked at Ohio State. I know he played at Georgia Tech, so the guy is obviously, you know, he knows football and everything. I don't deny did, did that. He play, did he play there? Yeah, he played receiver. I think he walked on. I mean, okay. it's still better than most people, so okay. good for him. Right. Um, 
But at the same time, it's like, man, and you know, he was brought on to be a senior assistant or, you know, senior quality control coach at Ohio State under Urban. And then Ryan Day promoted him to the quarterbacks coach in 2020. And it's like, well, what are this guy's credentials to be a quarterbacks coach? I mean, he played receiver at Georgia Tech. He didn't play quarterback at Georgia Tech. So who is he to be the one coaching the quarterbacks? Or is that just a is he just on the staff because of nepotism and Ryan Day is coaching the quarterbacks? Not only is Ryan Day coaching the quarterbacks, but he's running the offense. Yeah. And as the offensive coordinator and he's the head coach on the team. So right. he he's bringing, you know, he still has people on the staff that what that shows me, he does not trust them and he doesn't trust them to do the job correctly. And he's a micromanager. Well, yeah. that's not a healthy, you know, state of, things like you just can't do that because then it's just gonna piss off your employees or you know i don't know like Corey dennis is probably like well you know i get paid to just do whatever the hell i want i mean you could look at it that way yeah i, I think it's clear that ryan day is a little bit of a control freak because of all that he um puts on himself you know mm -hmm. coaching the quarterbacks running the offense uh at least on the offensive side of the ball he's a control freak on the defensive side of the ball he seems to be Hands exactly. off, man. He doesn't yeah, do a the, damn thing. Yeah, the exact opposite. Um, speaking, yeah, speaking of the defensive side of the ball, though, I think we can agree on before we move on to that, that, you know, Corey Dennis, they need to find a legit quarterbacks coach or something, offensive coordinator, correct? I, I yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I do. And so we'll, we'll get to that uh, a little bit more here, here in just a minute. But, um, Jay, 13 guys have hit the portal. Um, mm, yeah. You know, that's a little bit concerning in today's day and age. I, I don't want to get too concerned about that. Uh, mm -hmm. Chip Trainum was a surprise. He hit the portal. Um, uh, yes, absolutely. It is. Julian I Fleming was a little, little, uh, little bit of a surprise. I mean, I don't think it's that big of a loss, but it's a little bit of a surprise. No. You know, so those are two contributors that hit the portal. Joe Royer. Joe Royer, yeah. Mm -hmm. He just went um, in a little while yeah. ago. Yeah. Um, well, who else? I mean, obviously, I think you know, thirteen guys. Do you have a list in front of you? No, I don't or have just, the. I don't have the list. In front yeah, of they've me. had. It was, here's my thing. Um, all of those guys outside of maybe, you know, I guess obviously Kyle McCord, but um, Julian Fleming, like none of them are really like big time contributors. I think Joe Royer, you know, really should have gotten a shot. I think he's more talented than Cade Stover, although to Cade had a great senior season, but, yeah. um, you know, it's time to move on. Like DeMonte train him, like he would have seen carries this year, but now we have the rumor mill that, you know, Travion Henderson might come back, which would be great. I mean, it's, it's being reported that he's, he's coming. Yeah, I have to hear him actually say it with yeah. conviction. I don't listen yeah. to any of these reports Yeah, because it I know that Marvin Harrison says he would like to come back, but that doesn't yeah. mean he is going to come back. Remember, I, that. I don't, I don't see Harrison. No, yeah. he's gone. But you know, he, Ohio State came up with a good NIL package for him. He's already a millionaire because of his dad. He doesn't need the money. It's like, yeah, yeah I mean, it would be totally if he just had the drive and the desire to uh, mm -hmm. come back and try and, and and accomplish what he hasn't been able to. You know, beat Michigan win a big 10 championship and, and, you know, make a run in the playoffs. Um, in order to do that, they'd have to get, you know, J uh, to a Malowal and, and Sawyer and, and uh, they'd have to get several guys to come back. I think to really have a chance to do that. Is there a mm -hmm. chance to get those many guys to come back? I don't know. JT's not going to be a first round pick. You know, he has like 10 sacks or less in his career. You don't go in the first round having 10 sacks or less in your career. No. Um, Jack Sawyer, I think, would be even lower. I certainly think he should come back. Um, I think we're going to be better at linebacker with Simon and, um, you know, and, and Hicks. CJ Hicks, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So, you know, th there is some positives. Is that possibly uh, Henderson is staying? Um, and you know, maybe there is going to be some others who Emeka, stay. A Mecca might stay. A Mecca, you yeah. know, it was, I swear, you know, you look like shows you before the preseason stuff. I think they had like six, seven Ohio state players in the top 50 NFL prospects and stuff like that. And didn't turn out that way. They all had kind of really 
average season. No one say it was bad. They none none of them had bad seasons, but they didn't do well enough to be like first round or early second round picks. And yeah. I mean, if you look at why this team's not competing for national championship, it's they don't have very many first round picks. I mean, they and might they, have... maybe, and, and that could go towards development, though. I mean, mm -hmm. we're forgetting that they weren't developed there. I mean, you, Jack Sawyer and JT Tuimalo, and you know, they're just you know average players. Like you know, Tuimalo is flash and stuff, but only against Penn State. What has he really done outside of them? Nothing. Jack yeah. Sawyer's done more outside of him in other games. Then Tui Malau. Tui Malau, like, has those games where he really flashes, but outside of that, he hasn't done jack shit. No, he hasn't. And so, you know, that that kind of, you know, brings me to the question, like, I think the program's at a fragile place right now. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, yes, there's the number two uh, class in the country still. I don't think we're probably going to stay there. But, you know, we're probably going to stay at least in the top five. So, I mean, it's hard to say, like, it's crashing and burning, but we continue to miss at key positions. You know, uh, Seton, big five-star offensive tackle. Oh, uh, can't even really feel bad about it because he went to Colorado. Yeah, I know. It really didn't bother me as much then. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, nonetheless, it's, it's still a mess. I mean, it's still a position that we needed that we're not getting anybody in. So, whether he went to Colorado or Alabama, we still are not getting, you know, filling that need. Um, and so, you know, missing on the, the speed rushers, which, which uh, you know, we have, we have been missing. Um, and so the question is, like, yeah. you know, is, is there some issues starting to really develop? I mean, the quarterback is gone. Um, there's imbalances in the staff. You've got an offensive minded coach and you've only got four defensive coaches. So the, there's, there's heavy coaching staff towards the offense. And then you've got a coach that spends all the time with the offense. Mm -hmm. um, we need to get top level linebackers back at Ohio state. We haven't had top level linebacker play in a while. James Laurinaitis maybe is the answer to doing that, but you got to put him on staff. You can't just have him, you know, hanging out in Columbus uh, on campus and and be able to do that. And, you know, instead we have Parker Fleming, who's out recruiting long snappers. You know, that's what he's doing with his Is time. that really is going on right now? He, yeah, like it yeah, it was on Twitter. He was like, you know, Parker Fleming and a long snapper. You know, the long snapper was like, I think he committed, like he's coming to Ohio State. Man, oh man, that is, you know, I was hearing rumors that Parker Fleming is gone and they are going to elevate James Laronitis. So I think I that's good so. news. Well, I mean, I, you know, I guess I hope so too. But my thing is, it's like, my point is, what do we really know about James Laronitis? Yeah, well, he was we, a good. We don't know much. No. And I think he's a good recruiter, but who has he gotten at Ohio State so far? I know he can still call these kids on the phone. I know, he, I understand he cannot physically go and travel and, and all of that and that you know that definitely hurts and it would be probably a little easier but i don't i think he was an i think he was a graduate assistant at notre dame too so i don't really know what we really have with him i mean i hope he's a really good linebacker coach but that's just you know we're just thinking yeah. we're yeah. hoping we're hoping yeah. we yeah. don't know it's, it's it's a hope and a prayer i mean it, you know maybe it works out maybe it doesn't but I think it's better than Parker Fleming. You know, it's it's at least a better effort at yeah, what you're considering special teams has been an absolute freaking disaster. Yeah, we were ranked like 90th in the country or something in special teams. I haven't had any kickoff returns. We don't I mean, I think every now and then we block a punt, but our kicking game is always terrible in the big games. Um they can't run fake freaking you know, fake you know, like uh, a fake on like, you know, punt team correctly against Georgia. The year prior again and against Michigan. It's just a disaster. Um, but I see what you mean. Like, you know, it seems like we're on shaky grounds with like state of the program and you know, it really all comes back to just, you know, Ryan days lost three in a row to Michigan. What is he like 56 and seven, but you know, 10 wins is like guaranteed for any Ohio state coach nowadays in the big three, 10. So that's not really accomplishing much. Three years of accomplishing zero of the program goals. Yeah. 
Haven't yeah. won the Big Ten. Haven't beaten Michigan. Haven't won a national championship. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so three years of uh, of not winning the playoff. Uh, of well, and haven't won a playoff game. I mean, haven't you know? Haven't even won a you know won a playoff game either. So, none of that. Um, you know, moving on to the athletic director, we won't stay here long, but I think it's very pivotal. Uh, it's it's a pivotal spot for Ohio State athletics with the kind of fragile place that the football program is in. Mm -hmm. Yes, it could stay steady or elevate, but it just as easily could take that step back. Um, and then, you know, the other sports um, at Ohio State as well. We need an aggressive athletic director. Gene is has been extremely passive. Uh, I know he's been good in some ways. I'm, I'm not going to, like, just totally crap on Gene like he's been totally terrible, but – He's not. I been, will. I think Gene Smith yeah. fucking sucks. <laughs> but you know, he's certainly not been good in recent years. He's he's uh, very slow. He reacts to things. He doesn't ever forward think and get ahead of the curve. And we need an athletic director that will be forward thinking, get ahead of the curve. Uh, we need an athletic director with a with a personality more like an Urban Meyer who is going to go in and kind of rattle things a little bit and, and buck the compliance and, and the administration that has been so slow uh, to move with changes. So, you know, that's important that, that we get, um, you know, a good, a, I don't good know experience. anything about athletic directors, man. I just know like when they suck at Ohio state, but the only name that comes to mind that people have thrown around is that guy from Washington state, Pat John. Yeah. And I mean, that's just kind of anything about him. Well, I mean, he um, he like spent time at Ohio State, so I mean, like, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that, okay, you know. yeah. Ohio State is not like the most, you yeah. know, just because you spend time at Ohio State doesn't mean like you're what's best for Ohio State. Right, right. I mean, there's some like Ohio State connection, but that doesn't, you know, that doesn't really tell me yeah. a whole lot. So yeah, you know, all Ohio State cares about is diversity and equity and equality and stuff now. Yeah, so did, did you, did you, you're indoctrinated by that garbage plan. I don't know if you're the right guy. Yeah, it was reported on the news that Ohio State was some class of theirs was teaching something about, you know, uh, having to acknowledge your uh you know your white patriarchal privilege or some crap like that i i don't what? know what it was but it was yeah no, it, it was, doesn't it doesn't surprise me it's happening yeah, it a was, lot of places man yeah. i know this isn't a political podcast but yeah damn man that's just scary the way this country is going speaking along those lines did you catch what jordan seaton said today when he committed to colorado no what he said he said he wanted to go play for Deion sanders because uh he wanted to go like help him out because he looks like him or something like that. Basically that Deion Sanders is black and uh, that's why Jordan Seaton went there. Okay. And it doesn't make any sense to me. Cause like, you know, your position coach at Ohio state is black. Ohio state has black coaches on their roster. How does that make any sense? It, in, in, in a way it seemed like it was kind of racist, you know, like just yeah. going to a school just because like the coach is a certain color, but, but any yeah that's a um, that, that's an odd way to uh yeah you know to to potentially throw your football career away at a school that's going to win five or six or seven games you know while you're there i don't know um, i don't know he obviously made a lot of money from colorado and he you know i mean it is nice out there i'm not gonna i mean yeah. i visited denver like have you been to denver no i've okay. i've been to you know california Arizona, uh, you know, Arizona and Utah out there. I have not been to, uh, okay. Colorado Utah and Denver are basically the same state. Let's be real. Yeah. There's not yeah. much difference between them. Um, yeah. you're absolutely, yeah. Utah, I think is really nice. They've never been there. Um, but anywho, yeah, man, he made that comment. People can go look on, uh, I think it was, uh, skip Bayless's show. I don't know the name of it, his show. He went on there live at like 11 AM mm. in the morning and uh, announced like his decision and uh caught everybody off guard man no one is expecting colorado that's for sure we all thought it was no. like oregon ohio state tennessee no. alabama so so like to wrap yeah. up this segment jay I i'm gonna say that i am not ready to say that the program is going off the rails i'm not ready to say that ohio that uh, ryan day's losing the program but i will say it's in a fragile place and that 
a few wrong decisions over the next, you know, six to 12 months could certainly send it, um, you know, in that direction. So, you know, where, where are you on the subject? Man, um, it's hard to say if players, I know Kyle McCord is transferring, but I think that's more of a case of him being soft after I, you know, tried to do a little bit of research into that. And if what, you know, if the players, you know, if Travion comes back and Ibuka comes back and some of our defensive players like Sawyer and Tui Malau, I think the program is actually okay. I mean, mm-hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm concerned, but if all of them like leave, which is kind of interesting. They haven't announced yet though, either, but I guess, you know, somebody showed Garrett Wilson and, uh, Chris Olave from two years ago when they announced and they honestly didn't announce until December 27th. So we have a lot of time. So we have a lot of time for those guys to make up their minds. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, I would not say the program is starting to lose control, but something does need to change. And I think one of those changes needs to come a defensive coordinator because Jim Knowles is not it, man. Did you see? So today, like I think, Duke is hiring Manny Diaz. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah. They, they decided to go with Manny Diaz and Jim Knowles did interview. So it's just like, I personally don't think Knowles is a very good defensive coordinator. The team is always going to, they're going to give up the points against the better offenses. I mean, it was, you know, 2022, you know, I, I, you know, I said all year in 2022, even before this podcast, I'm like, man, this guy's overrated. He's not a very good DC. But then, like, you know, the defense got better in 2023, and I said it only has gotten better because the players running it have gotten better. Nothing that Knowles have done. But then Michigan comes around, they give up 30 points, and Michigan's offense was the best offense we saw all year, but it's still not very good. No, it's still not a great offense. No. So, mm-hmm. But uh, the offenses that we saw most of the year, as we have said, have been, uh, you know, just just very, very bad. Well, that's the Big Ten for you, man. The Big yeah. Ten just is freaking terrible like they don't have the athletes they don't have the coaches they they don't really have much of anything i mean they don't have the geography to get the athletes it's like you know somebody was talking about michigan today and they said they're like well they are the number one defense in the country but look at all the offenses that they've freaking gone against they're all like there are a couple that are ranked in the 100s the best offense they played all season was ohio state at 36th yeah not not it man yeah now i mean i will say that the new big 10 uh starting next year has the potential um you know to be something pretty significant if if the if they were in the if the conference realignment took place this year we would have one two three four five five big 10 teams out of the 12 and one, two, three, four, five SEC teams out of the twelve. So no, if sure. if the you know if the conference realignment had taken this year, it would be it would be five and five. So uh, improvement is coming to the Big Ten. Is it going to be enough to be able to kind of you know have that two or three programs that could win a national championship? I don't know. That's yet to be seen. Um, Because none of the teams coming in have won a national championship in the modern era outside of USC. And, you know, that's been a while. But uh, hopefully, um, hopefully it'll bring significant improvement, innovation, and and it will help, uh, you know, it'll help the entire conference. I mean, that's, that's what I am well, That's again, I've for. said this before. We just can't bank on the new teams coming into the conference and say, okay, everything's good now. We have some good teams. Mm. Like teams like Rutgers and Maryland and, I mean, Wisconsin needs to get better again. These teams mm-hmm. need to start pulling their weight. Their recruiting absolutely sucks. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. Like, yeah. uh, you know, somebody made a point today. They were talking about Florida and they're losing commits. They're a dumpster fire program. If I'm not mistaken, they're – they're higher ranked in the recruiting rankings with all of their turmoil higher up in the recruiting rankings than anyone in the big 10, which is fucking terrible. Like that is a joke. Except Ohio state. Except Ohio state. Any, yeah. yeah, Outside of Ohio state, Florida's ranked. They're 
sixth. They are sixth with, you know, a 92-41 composite star average. Like, you're telling me a program with that much turmoil is out recruiting Penn State and Michigan? Why aren't these teams recruiting better? I know you're already kicking our ass with the recruit you're getting, Michigan, but Michigan, as much as we love you guys subscribing to us, you're never going to win a national championship recruiting the way you are. You can beat Ohio State's ass. That's not very hard because we have Ryan Day. But at the same time, you're never going to win a national championship with number one, the way you run your offense. And number two, you just don't have the high end ability. Yeah. I mean, you could win a national championship. They could win a national championship if their offense went 55, 45, or maybe Mm -hmm. even 50, 50, as far as pass run uh, with some wide receivers that can catch the ball. But we talked about that the other day. They don't have wide receivers. They don't have those guys anymore. Uh -uh. That's what they're, that's what they're missing. If they had a couple of good wide receivers, I would say that they would give Alabama everything that they could take, but they don't have those guys. And so their only prayer to win is to force Milrow into a couple of uh, turnovers and really capitalize on that. You know, outside of something like that, you know, if, if it's a, a relatively clean game both sides, I just don't think that they have much of a shot. Man, I hope they do. We're, you know, I tell you what, well, when we do our Big Ten Bowl preview show, mm-hmm. whenever that may be, we'll talk more about that game. Um, mm-hmm. But you're, you're absolutely right. Um, it's it's going to be hard to pick Michigan in that game, even though, we, you know, we are cheering for you guys, like, because you're carrying our conference banner. You guys are. Yeah. So, you know, if you guys look bad, Ohio State's going to look worse. That's the fact yeah. of the matter. And speaking of the conference banner, um, you know, I know a lot of people are checked out, and this is kind of our last uh, subject of the day. I know a lot of people are checked out on this uh, Missouri matchup, but in my mind, um, it, you know, maybe it doesn't mean that much for the program. Maybe a win or a loss. Now, you can't convince me that if Ohio State went out and beat Missouri. 38 to 17. You can't tell me that that wouldn't be a really positive thing for the program after Missouri uh, went 10 and two in the SEC and played Georgia, a a very competitive game. You can't tell me that that wouldn't mean something to beat that team. However, I get that it's, you know, basically a glorified um, exhibition game. However, For Ryan Day, I think it's more important than that because a loss to Missouri would put Ryan Day squarely, squarely in the John Cooper reincarnate camp. Oh, yeah. Uh, Losing to Michigan, then going to play an SEC team that nobody really wanted to play, that the perception was Ohio State was the more talented, better team, and then go and lose. Uh, You know, it was really during the Cooper years that that record versus the SEC got really Really terrible. Really bad. I think they lost to, like, Auburn and Alabama and Tennessee. Tennessee. Uh, South Carolina twice. South Carolina twice. Holy crap. Ryan Brewer years. Man, oh, man, that was disgusting. Yeah. The South Carolina teams definitely never should have beat us. I understand South Carolina in 2001 was really good for them, but they still shouldn't have beaten Ohio state. So, so I is for, for my calculations, we were zero and nine at one point versus the SN, sec Trestle beat them or beat Arkansas. That made mm-hmm. it one and nine Arkansas. Yeah. Arkansas. So one and nine, then we lose the 2011 year Braxton's freshman year to Florida in the terrible Gator bowl. So that makes one and 10. Then urban beats Alabama in the sugar bowl that makes us two and 10 then um we lose to alabama in the national championship game which i know that's not a bowl game but that's a postseason game so by my calculations we're two and 11 against the sec in postseason matchups and uh, to me this means something uh hell you know, yeah even yeah. though like it's you know i understand missouri's only been in the sec for like 12 12- how long have they been in the SEC? Like eleven years? I don't even know. Yeah, maybe not even that long. But 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 they 
they're in the SEC and they won 10 games. Right. That's the point. Like to me, it doesn't matter how long they've been there. Yeah, it's not LSU or Florida or or Auburn or uh Tennessee or Georgia or one of the, you know, the the more traditional SEC teams, but it, it it's an SEC team and they were 10 and 2 in the SEC and Ryan Day needs to figure out how to win this game and hopefully um whichever quarterback he selects is going to be ready to go. I assume it's Devin Brown. Did you I assume see- so too. I mean, did- I assume so too. Yeah, and I did see, and I know you're about to say his little graphic of the burning ships. Yeah, yeah, you saw that? Yeah, I did see that. It does seem like he's ready and stuff, but, you know, uh, yeah, hell yeah, I want to win this game, and uh, I want to beat Missouri, and I want to beat the SEC, and this game does absolutely mean something, um, and it does go in the win-loss column as well, so... Um, yeah, man, it is where Ohio state is now, man. We're not good enough to like play in the playoff or play in the top six team. So get no. excited for what we are. That's what we are now. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you, all you can do is hope for better or hope for Ryan day to get replaced. I mean, so, so that's where I'm at. The fact that Ryan day lost to Michigan, mm-hmm. um, in, in a strange way, it has been a relief to me because I have seen the problems with the Ryan day regime for a couple of years well, really for a few years now. Um, and, uh, you know, I was never a fan of Ryan day, never, not even in 2019. I was never a fan of Ryan day. I was like, man, this guy's never coached before and we're no. hiring him at, at Ohio state. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's either get better Ryan day or get out. And so that's kind of where we're at. So to me, it's kind of a therapeutic spot, like either, he's going to figure out how to get better and he's going to take a long look in the mirror or in the next year or two, he's going to be gone, and we're going to be on to the next era of Ohio State football. And so, to me, uh, I, I'm excited about things again in in a in a certain kind of way. Um, I'm not excited that you know we're we're not a top four or five team this year, but like you said, you know, beat uh, beat the opponent that's in front of you, a top ten SEC team, and that would be a good way to end the season. And uh, for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, about Devin Brown, he tweeted out a um, a picture of burning ships. And it certainly seemed that he was alluding to the Vikings who uh, I don't remember the island that they were taking, but when they were going to take a particular island, they burned all of their ships behind them or so the legend goes, because the mindset was either we take this island or we die trying but we're not going to retreat. We're burning the ships and we are not giving ourselves any opportunity to head back or to retreat. And so uh, most people, myself included, kind of interpret it. Well, some people acted like they didn't know what he was talking about. So I guess they're not big fans of big uh, students of history, but I feel like he was saying, um, I'm in this to win it. You know, I'm, I'm burning the ships. I'm committed. I'm, I'm ready to, I'm ready to take this thing. So, Hey, Jay, I hope we see Devin Brown go out and throw for 300 yards, rush for you know 25 or 30 key yards, and put up a big win against uh, against Missouri. And uh, that's not going to make Ryan Day look that good. But at the end of the day, if that happens, I'll even give Ryan Day a little bit more credit, saying, "Hey, you let McCord walk. You you knew he was slightly above average." You knew he'd probably win you 10 games next year, but you also knew he probably wasn't going to take you where the program needs to go. So you took a shot, you let him move on, and you know, we'll see what we get. Well, you know, maybe we get a portal quarterback. I don't see that many portal quarterbacks that I'm excited about. Um, so I uh uh you know, I'm just kind of interested to see what Devin Brown and Lincoln Keenholz uh Keenholz have and uh, excited to hopefully go out and beat. Missouri. And that's really all I got for today, Jay. Do you have any final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I'll just say, uh, speaking of Vikings, a good TV show that was on the history. I think it was on the history channel. Did you see that show ever? No, I've, I've, I've thought about watching it a couple of times. It was good, good? man. I damn near finished it. I, you know, I think I made it to the final season and there was like a two parts of the final season. And I watched like the first half and I never got to the second half. Good show. Um, it's limited by uh, being on the History Channel because it can't show 
a lot of like you know blood guts guts and yeah. sex and all of that stuff um spartacus was a much better show that's probably the greatest live action show of all time yes i said that um that was on stars uh okay. anywho um i hope we get to see kind holt some in this game because i do believe he's the most talented quarterback on the roster and yeah um also we talked about you know we value this game against missouri but i tell you what if ryan day loses this game his seat is burning hot and it just cements the fact that he's a lame duck coach and it's going to affect recruiting and you know you lose to missouri and it's just it's really really just a countdown until he gets fired that's it I will feel much better about the prospects of him getting things turned around if they look good, if they look sharp, if they're fired up, and if they win this game. If they lose this game, boy, oh boy, then then I, mm. if they lose this game, Jay, I am shifting more towards the mindset of, okay, who's next? <laughs> yeah. I, again, I'll have to do a deep dive into Missouri. I know they're, yeah. you know, I know they have a good offense and stuff, but I, I need to look more into them. I know they have a running back by the name of Cody Schrader, who's very, very good. I think he's up for the um, Doak Walker Award, and mm. I don't know. I guess we'll find out if he wins it tomorrow. So, yeah, um, or actually, was that tonight? When is the award show for college football? I don't know. No, no idea. I have no idea either. So, no yeah, I don't have anything else. So, Michael, yeah, this is a shorter episode, not as much content, but um, there's always news and it's going to come. So right. be ready for it, everyone. Yep. Thank you guys for listening. We'll be back uh, with some more episodes and uh, be looking for those, uh, you know, bowl matchup preview episodes that we're going to have coming Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Specifically with the Big Ten. A lot of Big Ten SEC content because there's a lot of Big Ten SEC matchups. Yeah, Thank you guys for awesome. watching. Thank you for liking and subscribing. We will be back with another episode very soon, and we'll see you next time.